Hey there. So I read Proust's In Search of Lost Time during the pandemic and I want to tell you about that experience today. You may have seen my first video that I made about Proust back in January when I had finished reading Swan's Way. In that video, I was drinking tea and eating madeleines out of this lovely cup, which as you can see now in the month of December <laughs> has uh, totally cracked on me, which I feel like is a great metaphor for how life has been going in 2020 because it is kind of busted and inconvenient in a lot of ways, but yet at the same time I'm still mostly together and somewhat functional still. So today's video is about literature but it's also about life and the way that those two are connected. Because I really believe that we as readers bring so much baggage into the texts that we read. How we interpret a work depends so much on our own pasts, our own beliefs, and our current experiences and emotions that we're feeling in the present. So that definitely happened to me this year, hence why I want to make this video kind of focused on the experience of what it was like to read Proust in the 2020 pandemic because for me these two experiences are always going to be linked in my mind. This is also a video that I've avoided making for quite a few months. So like I mentioned I started In Search of Lost Time back in January with Swan's Way and I was reading at at the rate of about one volume per month with the exception of the month of May where I read the final two volumes. And it is now December so it's almost been seven months since I finished this series and I still feel like I'm processing it and getting my thoughts together about what this experience was like. So in some ways making this video feels really intimidating for me because I truly believe that In Search of Lost Time is one of the greatest masterpieces of world literature. It is such a long, dense, and complex text. You could easily spend the rest of your life analyzing this book and you'd come away with something new from it every time. So I don't really think that I can just sit here in a casual YouTube video and fully articulate how much this series meant to me, all of the insights that I gained while reading it, and why I think it was such a worthwhile reading project. Project. I'm gonna try my best to share some of those things, but just remember this is just the tip of the iceberg because there's just so much insight and wonder to be found in these books that I feel like I can only even really start to scratch the surface of it to share some of my impressions with you. But I did want to kind of keep the focus on what it was like to be reading these books this year at this point of my life. So in today's video I wanted to start off by telling you why I think the 2020 pandemic was the perfect time to read Proust and how it really helped me out during that pandemic. Then in the second part of the video I want to share some of the ideas that were explored in In Search of Lost Time that I found particularly helpful and comforting for me in this year of change and disruption. And then I wanted to end this video by sharing a few non-pandemic related reasons for why I think this is just a really great piece of literature that you should try reading at least once in your life. To start off, I want to share a few reasons as to why I think it was really good timing to pick up Proust during the pandemic. I mean, the series is called In Search of Lost Time. Now I know everyone around the world has their own unique experiences and opinions on what it was like to get through this pandemic, but for myself, lost time feels like a very fitting epithet because it did really feel like this era where we lost freedom and socialization and the ability to travel and go out and experience things communally. So it does feel like this strange lost era. So I think the title alone is able to express a lot about what it was like to live through 2020. Now something to keep in mind is I started this series back in January and then I read volume two in February. So those were kind of two months before things had really started getting real where I live with the pandemic. There were no real lockdowns or restrictions of any kind during those months. So when I started off this series, I was still pretty much living my normal life and I was still really enjoying this reading experience. So it's not like you can only enjoy this during times of crisis. However, lockdown for me started in the month of March, which is when I was on volume three, The Guermont Way, and then it continued through. For all the other months, when I read this in March, April, and May, I was not going into work, I was hardly ever leaving my house, and I found myself really needing these books. I felt like I was reading these books on a much deeper level. 
because in January and February, these are just brilliant books that I was reading for entertainment on my weekends when I had a bit of spare time. However, <laughs> when lockdown started, all of my life felt like spare time, and these books were almost like the only important things that were happening to me. And I was just so invested in what was happening in the story because it was just way more exciting than my day-to-day -day life. It also helps that this is just a gigantic reading project to embark upon, and I never really felt like the length of this series was a negative thing because I was looking for things to do. And I really appreciated how this book was able to bring some consistency and stability to my life because it really felt like my world was pretty unstable, things were changing from day to day and nothing felt normal. Yet the more familiar I became with Proust's depiction of France, the more at home I began feeling in this world, which I think is such a testament to his powers of description because he makes his settings feel so vivid and evocative. His characters really feel like people that you're starting to get to know. So the quality of the writing made it possible for me to have this really enriching immersive experience where I was just kind of putting aside the chaos of my world and just entering into this new space. I also really appreciate the sense of routine that these books gave me because when I was no longer traveling in to work every day, it felt like my day was quite unstructured and reading a little bit of Proust every day really helped me still feel like there was some stability and structure in my life. So reading a little bit of Proust every day made me feel like I still at least had some structure. And I did try to be pretty intentional about having a kind of set quota for each day so that I wouldn't burn through the books too quickly. So I think I would try to read around 30 to 40 pages a day. It usually worked out to around an hour of reading. And as time went on, that hour of reading Proust every day was such a valuable time to me. I really began to look forward to that time, especially because I would try to really treat myself to just a really relaxing, lovely experience while I was reading Proust. So sometimes that would mean making a cup of tea to enjoy. Other times that would mean taking the book into the bathtub. I actually ended up investing in one of these boards that you can take with you into the bathtub to support your book because my Proust books were so heavy. <laughs> So weirdly enough, reading Proust ended up becoming a major component of my daily self-care routine. I also feel like my reading experience of this changed with the seasons, so I have great memories of curling up during those freezing winter months under my blanket reading these books. But then in April and May, as the weather started to warm up, I moved into a new house and I had a balcony facing the trees. I'd read my book while listening to the birds and feeling the warmth of the sun for the first time in a long time. And I have such blissful memories of reading these books while watching life really spring back into action in those spring months. So rather than feeling like a chore, reading Proust every day really felt like a gift and it made me savor every page that I was reading. Another thing that I really valued about reading these books was how they provided me with such a rich interior life. I think it was such an important series to be reading at this time because Proust left me with so much emotional and intellectual stimulation. So like I mentioned, I was only reading it for about one hour every day. But because the writing is so rich, you can really think about the passage that you read throughout the rest of your day and kind of reflect on what you had learned and to try to take what Proust was writing about and to apply it to your own life. So I found that my daily reading gave me a lot of things to like really ponder and think about, but it also gave me a lot of things to feel as well. So I think that was really helpful for me because I never felt bored at any point in lockdown because I was still having this really fulfilling and rewarding interior life while I was reading these books. And then one final reason why I think it was good timing to read them during the pandemic is that so many of these books have to do with society and the social world. So there is a truly wide cast of characters in these books. And by the end of the series, you really will feel like you know these people. 
for better or for worse, because a lot of them are pretty selfish and cold socialites. But still, because Proust focused so much on the experience of the social world, it did help me feel like I was still gaining some social interaction during those months. And it's not like I'm like delusional and I was like talking to these characters and pretending that I was at these parties, but it still did really help to be able to read these observations of these characters and the conversations that they were having with each other even though I wasn't able to go out and see my family or my friends or my coworkers or my students, I was still feeling like I was getting to observe these social worlds from reading these books, which I found to be kind of helpful. So those are just a few of the reasons as to why I'm so grateful to have read this series during this time of my life, because as you can see, they kept me busy, they kept me feeling comforted, and also it really gave me a sense of purpose during some really difficult months. So for my next section of the video, I wanted to share some of the ideas from the book that I found particularly comforting to read during this time period. Now, of course, there are a lot of big philosophical ideas being explored throughout this whole series, but there are five in particular that I want to focus on because they really resonated with me upon my first reading of the series. And these are all ideas that I found kind of made me feel better about my circumstances. The first idea that I took a lot of comfort from is one that I think is developed throughout this entire series, and that is change is constant. Because I think what felt a little bit scary about the pandemic is that it felt kind of on the scale that was un unprecedented. So it felt like change was kind of scary and we didn't really know what was going to happen from day to day, but you can totally see these same sort of issues reflected in many of the volumes in this text. Um, even especially in the last volume, it's set after World War One is ending and the world is dealing with the Spanish flu pandemic. So I think that these books are really documenting a huge time of change, and that is the turn of the 20th century, because a lot of the content in these books is taking place in that latter half of the 19th century, and we're seeing a style of life that really is no more. Although the series is mostly dealing with upper class or even aristocratic characters, you can still feel like we're in this huge era of change, where this aristocratic status isn't really carrying the weight that it once used to, or even the sort of people who are succeeding in this high society are changing caliber throughout the series. So different characters who end up gaining a lot of money and influence and power in this new social world, we kind of see how their characters have been shifting and kind of degrading throughout this series. As well, it's also a huge period of technological change. So there are some remarkable moments in this book where Proust gets to see technological innovations for the first time, like looking up at the sky and seeing an airplane and just being really rattled by that experience. There's sections in here that go over how freaky the telephone is. So you can see he's really at this brink of technological change. The way that people communicate and live their lives is totally on the verge of completely shifting. There's almost a mournful tone because he is someone that's living in a bit more of a modern present, looking back on those years of his childhood and his youth and kind of reflecting that maybe because things are faster and more convenient, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are better. You can also see, of course, that these books are dealing with some of the major political changes that were happening during this time period, especially when you get to the final volume and it's taking place after World War I, which was one of the hugest changes ever that affected so many people in Europe and how they ended up living their lives and going forward in the future. So it is kind of haunting reading this book from your like 21st century perspective and there's kind of minor hints towards things that you know are going to be such huge factors in these characters lives and things that still have implications in our present day. So what you can see going throughout these books is that our world is always constantly changing and shifting and that's really part of what we're doing is trying to adapt to that without forgetting what we've gone through in the past but still finding ways to keep up with that momentous change. And I think that leads into my second idea which is that the self is also growing and shifting. So not only is our world <laughs> completely always on the go, but so are we. And Proust does a really interesting job of showing us how throughout our lives, 
we are many different people and we are kind of always dying and being reborn without really consciously realizing that. And at first this was not an idea that I found comforting because I think it's easier for us to believe that we are just one stable self who is on this journey from past to future throughout our lives. But rather, I think Proust is showing us that the idea of like the unified, consistent personality is a fictitious illusion and we are constantly growing and evolving. Now, Proust develops this in many different ways throughout the series, but one of the ways you can see it is through the characters because the people that you meet in volume one or volume two are going to be almost unrecognizably different when you see them again in the final volume. And I loved that they had these drastic shifts in personality and in appearance and social habits. And yet, even though it kind of feels a bit jarring, it also makes sense because you see them in the state of flux throughout the entire series. You really can't feel like you can pin down a character because you've met them a few times before. They're constantly growing, changing, and evolving. And that makes for a really interesting reading experience as we are trying to figure out who these people are. You can also see this idea developed through the narrator and his love affair with Albertine. Albertine is the main love interest of the narrator and she pops up quite a lot throughout these different volumes. You can see how their relationship is always constantly changing. The narrator goes from being kind of indifferent towards her to being completely obsessed and then when she's no longer in his life he goes through this period of total devastation and it almost feels like it's an annihilation of his self. But then by the end, he is once again completely over Albertine and does not spare any extra thoughts on her. So the narrator almost realizes that he has been many different incarnations of himself. And the part of him, the person that he was when he loved Albertine, is no longer who he is now. And that's kind of a sad thing to face in a lot of ways because it makes you feel like you're betraying your loved one because you're, in a sense, no longer a person who loves them anymore. But what I think is uplifting about this idea is that no grief can last forever. So even though we might be experiencing hardship and loss, the self is again always growing. It's our only way forward. So in some ways that did kind of make me feel better about the world when I was reading this because, you know, the world won't always stay the same. But then again, neither will I. I'm always constantly changing and growing. And reading this text did help me feel like I was growing in this kind of more positive and expansive direction. Another idea that I found to be really inspiring is this idea that often the memories that are the most important to us end up being these really small, random moments that just make us feel really alive. So for the narrator in this series, he has his first of these memory epiphanies when he's dunking a madeleine into his tea and tasting that. That small taste brings him back to his entire childhood. And then in the final volume of this, the narrator has again a similar like memory epiphany when he's tripping on a cobblestone and he kind of loses his footing and that again brings him this rush of aliveness. It's interesting how both of these moments are unplanned and kind of minuscule in scale and what I liked about the series is that it kind of shows you that it's not really the big planned moments of your life that are really the most important ones. So there are some passages in here about how traveling is always kind of unsatisfying in the moment. When you have this expectation of something, you kind of have it hyped up in your mind that this cathedral that you're going to see is going to be the most beautiful building. And then you get there and it's nice, but it's not quite as exciting as you had it all planned out in your mind and also you've been walking for a few hours and you're really tired and you just kind of want to get back to your hotel and he's kind of reminding us that like these big planned moments that we have never really can live up to that expectation rather the moments where we feel the best about being alive are often these like small random unplanned experiences where we're just struck by these sensory joys that can bring back so much of the richness of our past. And I found that inspiring in the time of lockdown because I didn't really have any travel plans or any exciting moments to look forward to. 
but these books still made me feel like my life was important and worthwhile and I was still going to be able to build important memories and experiences for myself even with the small things. So that kept me kind of feeling motivated and uplifted about the whole experience. It's kind of cool how we are carrying our pasts with us constantly and I think for like a good writer your past contains everything that you need to know about life. Now we don't always have access to the richness of the past and like Proust mentioned the self is always changing so we may not remember the person that we were but we are always kind of carrying these different versions of ourselves, these different memories that we have, the way that we felt about the world. It's kind of all traveling with us and we should really cherish the things that will allow us to have access to those rich stores of our past experiences. To connect with that, I really appreciate how Proust wrote about beauty in his books because again, it's not always the big stunning things that are the most beautiful, but he has such a way of capturing so much of the beauty just inherent in everyday lives, in the different roads that you walk down every day and you kind of know in your memory like the back of your hand. I mean there was a passage in Swan's Way about asparagus that made it sound like it was the most beautiful thing ever created. So just imagine what he can do when he's describing landscapes like the beach or country roads or the buds on a hawthorn tree. There are just so many beautiful passages about the natural world and I was also really struck by the way that he was able to write about music, especially through this fictitious sonata that is mentioned many times throughout the work. But really any time that Proust is describing a sensory experience, whether that is listening to a sonata and connecting the sound that you're hearing with the emotional turbulence that you're feeling, or it's looking at a piece of art and connecting that with your life, he does such a brilliant job of doing that and I found from reading Proust it inspired me to take a closer look at the world as well and look for all of these profound sensations that I could find even in small everyday objects which again was really helpful in that experience of lockdown when you're not able to go off traveling and looking for these grand sites but you have to look for these experiences in smaller or more everyday experiences but they can still be just as transformative and enjoyable. And the last idea that I wanted to mention is kind of more trivial compared to the other ones, but it's the idea that parties are overrated because the way that he writes about these socialites in his series will really make you feel better about the experience of having to stay in and miss out on big group events and parties. I feel like he captures the dynamic so convincingly and the way that people just skewer each other socially. I mean, there are so many unkind moments that happen. Proust is also a master of dialogue and there were quite a few very long passages in many of these volumes detailing what it was like to be sitting at a dinner party and you would get all of the details of these conversations that people are having and a lot of times he's kind of making fun of these people and the pretensions that people have trying to sound smart and cultured, the way that people talk about art and music and they try to want to make themselves sound smarter by cutting down certain forms of arts. So I feel like he does a good job of showing you how these characters aren't really being authentic to who they truly are in these social settings and how performative a lot of the conversations are. You can see that how the hosts of a party will talk when all their guests are there versus how they talk when they're just alone in private and often that is a very unflattering comparison. So there's definitely a lot of kind of snarky social observations here. I feel like he's also able to capture just how boring a lot of these events are, these conversations that have these recycled ideas and opinions, especially because they go on at great length. So I felt like that was just quite enough dinner parties that I needed in my life and it didn't really make me miss not being able to attend these big social functions <laughs> in my real life because they were quite brutally depicted in this series. So to close off this video I wanted to leave you with three reasons why I think it's worthwhile to read Proust at any point in your life, you know, not just to get through a pandemic. But the first reason that really blew me away with this series is that it just feels way more multi-dimensional in scale 
than any other kind of novel that I've read before. Now I think part of that is because this book is just so long. So you spend so much time in this world and getting to know these characters that it makes every other normal sized novel just feel paltry in comparison. And what I loved about this is the characterization. Again, seeing characters at different points in their development, seeing how they change and their relationships change really makes it feel truly three-dimensional because these characters are just so different every time that you meet them and yet they're all kind of connected. In most other novels you're just kind of with a character for a certain span of time and there's really only so much that the author can do to develop that character. Whereas in this series you really do get to feel this richness of getting to know like a real person almost. You see them at so many different points, they change so much, they feel inconsistent in a lot of ways but in a way that also feels really true and lifelike. So it is so cool getting to read a book that is that huge in scale and able to capture that much about life. So I think that makes this project really unforgettable. My second reason for why I think it's so worthwhile to read Proust is that the world that he describes is hyper specific but it's also very easy to apply it to your own life. So even though this text is pretty specific, I do feel like it's universal in scope because he is dealing with these big factors such as desire and death and life and memory. All of these things are things that we're experiencing ourselves. So Proust as a writer does such a good job of writing with vivid detail but he's really writing about his own interior state, about what it's like to be a person going through life in this world. So I know a lot of people kind of like to cut up this series because it's quite bourgeoisie in values. And I know a lot of people don't like reading about rich people and their problems. And I understand <laughs> being turned off by those aspects of the story. But I think even if your life is nothing like Proust's, I think that there are still a lot of things that you can take away from this novel and apply to your own life. Now some of the things you're gonna feel the same way about the narrator but there are also a lot of ideas in this book that I didn't agree with. I didn't have the same ideas um, towards some things as this narrator did and that's okay too but it gets you thinking and it gets you defining your own values and how you want to experience and interpret your own life which is a pretty worthwhile experience. And then lastly, for my final reason for why I think you should read Proust is that it just makes you see people and the world differently. I personally found the way that he's able to articulate emotions and thoughts is really unparalleled. I don't think I've ever read another author who is really able to capture the interior world of our minds in such a compelling kind of way. I also love the way that he writes about writing, or rather the compulsion that he feels to be a writer, or that any artist feels to share their interpretation of the world. I think that is what each arc in this volume is kind of showing. In Swan's Way you see him experience the joy of reading and writing for the first time, of seeing something that is breathtaking and using writing as a tool to find out the deeper meaning that lies beyond these impressions that strike us. So a lot of us have these like beautiful profound feelings in our everyday lives but a lot of us lack the tools to actually investigate what's going on beneath the surface. Now for Proust writing was his way of examining the world and those feelings and I loved that he was able to share that with us and you can see that in the final volume where the narrator finally realizes his purpose and he finally understands how he is going to become a great writer. So it's breathtaking to watch that happen and watch his development from a child who just knows that he feels these strong things to being an adult who knows how he's going to share those impulses and everything beyond that with other people. So it's just a really cool arc to experience and I think it will change the way that you view the purpose of writing and literature and art in general which is a pretty major shift <laughs> to experience. 
So that's it for all of the topics that I want to cover uh, in today's video about Proust. Like I mentioned, I'm only scratching the surface here. There's so much to talk about and to analyze and to appreciate and savor with this series. I am just so grateful that I got to read this in 2020. It really made my year and it was just one of the most impressive, immersive experiences that I've ever had with literature. So if you've made it to the end of this video, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and listening to my thoughts. I'd love to hear it if you have also read Proust and you share any of these ideas or you have any other different insights that you want to share with me. I'd love to continue this conversation in the comments, but I'd also like to hear from you if you feel like you had a book that really helped you through a difficult time or this 2020 pandemic. I'm really curious what people were gravitating towards uh, in this period because I know that reading Proust is not going to be an effective coping mechanism <laughs> for everyone, but I would really like to hear if there was some kind of literature in your life that did help you feel better about this time of intense transition and change. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again later. Bye.